Yes, we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring on uh, the warmest of greetings from the TNN podcast going forward. Going forward. We'll not be doing a TV uh, media podcast. We are podcasting. Today, now the 27th of January. And um, before appreciate um, a lot of people we view as them generally i want to say happy new year as this now we post broadcast imagine 22 days into the new year january 22nd is now first day um however a better way to broadcast than one broadcast at all and we will talk a little bit about this before we come to the main subject matter but i just want to say massive greetings to everybody and just after we intro, I go rock Mott and Lily Tin and Lily Beat before we go further to the topic. Once again, welcome to the TNN podcast. My name is Prince Emil Kuma. Today is the 22nd of January 2022. I mean 2024, goodness me, 2024. And please don't touch that dial <clears throat> and please help for share. Once more, welcome to the TNN um, TV podcast. Today, the 22nd of January 2024. My name is And just for remind family, this is now, of course, most people will know. This now, the first time And I want to extend my thanks and appreciation both to the um, um, friends and foes of this platform. For having expressed concern, especially those who express genuine concerns, because they will be get people and we actually send me messages. It's like fellow waiting to go on, um, um, etc., etc. Really concerned. There were others, you know, where um, um turn them into a theater, which is um, um try for poke fun at you. But I accept and appreciate um the humor as well, because um, um you can't take life so seriously. To be honest, I mean, there are times you take them seriously, but there's a famous saying, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Um, however, as you can see, this is a live broadcast, and um, the host and presenter, me, Prince Emil Kroma, I am back um, on my anchor seat, and I bring this um, program to you now. And I want to say thank you very much again and wishing everybody a happy, happy and prosperous new year. When I say everybody, I mean everybody. Um, we go enter, <clears throat> we go entertain comments as usual. And can I say M Moa, good evening and thank you for greeting with global audience. And Fambule Masade developed the story. Um, if we can help for the share, please, so the number will develop. I know this show was due um two hours ago but we kept for post uh, postponing um um because of um certain reasons well again we are here and the main thing here is we want to talk when i go don't see the topic already we now about the former president unless by coroma of course we apologize for misspelling the pie in middle name by <laughs> coroma in exit we say we deliberately don't put a question mark at the end because of the question we are asking. Instead, we want to posit to Una the listener them that it is a strategic win for the Julius Mara Bio government. And waiting we go um, um, attempt for dupe on this program tonight 
is for explain why we think that it is a strategic win for the Julius Madabio um, um, regime. Um, once again, I uh, encourage Fambulem for have amicable, friendly exchange in the chat room. And I go to read with you now they put day and I go attend for read them out if possible, when if possible. But we ask family as usual for keep them very respectful, respect for the people and opinion. We might all just be looking at the same thing, but from a different perspective. But we aim and goal um might most necessarily mean the, the same. We want the same. Okay. So anyway. Um, let's see whether we can able to develop this story um, um, quickly. So, the recent this goes beyond the recent event with SPAC, um, waiting to happen now. But um, um, for the benefit of um, um, the current issue, I mean it's loaded with other things then. But for the benefit of the current issue, we want to begin the timeline on October 26th, yeah? I mean, November 26th. Um, might be making this mistake because I'm so heavily involved in the conflict in the Middle East, the Gaza conflict, uh, Gaza and um, Israel, Israel and the Palestinian. So October 7, November 26th. Anyway, we are talking about November 26th here. So on the morning, it was a Sunday morning, I still remember because I had many, many text messages early that morning, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I believe. But it was the early hours of that Sunday morning, four, five o'clock. I get people that will leave in the vicinity. So then they call me, they ask, um, there's something going on. Are you aware? Waiting to go on. Of course, I wasn't aware. And um, waiting them in the do not, they were making me aware that something of some serious magnitude be the ongo in the country. And it be so serious because within the axis of the presidential presidential lodge, this is inside the president reside, um, heavy shooting was ongoing. Um, this is not an easy thing, you, you know, yeah, or something like that. Where within the axis of the presidency, there is this kind of shooting in the other axis. Um, and see, I don't know feel that kind of thing they had before. Many a time we see the war where we bastardize ourselves. We don't see, um, um, we don't fair share of many cool plots. So, whenever then kind of things they had to happen, like shootings and what have you, people become apprehensive and for very good reasons. So, um, when this thing may happen, it raised the concern of many people. So, Mr. a few contacts, you know, in a tongue day. So, I managed for call a few contacts. Some of them were confused as well. I mean, very many of them were confused. But one conclusion where we all come to was that something serious been to happen. Well, of course, let me not be labor on this anymore because um, this event is now, what, um, from November, December, this is not January, like about two months plus. If I'm not mistaken. So it don't become clear to me that there was an attempted coup on the presidency. So in other words, the current government was um, um, meant to be removed by these at the time, uh, unknown assailants at the time. Uh, um, we storm um, military barracks, storm the depot, get arms and ammunition, Stormed the um, maximum prison, broke them open. I mean, there's a lot of controversy around this, by the way, and we're going to have to share some of that controversy here tonight as per waiting we, waiting we think. Yes, we say an attempted coup, allegedly, and this is not the key word we Sierra Leonean, then, some Sierra Leoneans then, don't they feel for use from this entire thing because judgment has not yet been rendered. Everything else is just based on suspicion, allegations, circumstances, and etc. But until you piece everything together and forward on a court, so in other words, the investigators will have to investigate waiting happen on that fateful day, put all waiting and get together and forward them to a court of competent jurisdiction for weighing on the issue, look at the evidence we did before them, and then go ahead and press charges 
or put charges on them people therefore say definitely based on the evidence we believe say this is what was supposed to happen or this is what these people wanted to do okay any chi you said russia is winning too <laughs> okay that's a different topic but yes not winning they have won the war but like i say um, um i don't know how you come up with this name and i suppose say this is not just made up name if you don't understand geopolitics and you think three four five hundred thousand um, um people dead uh, they talk about ukrainians dead as opposed to between 50 to eighty thousand. these are all massive numbers but look at the disproportionality in terms of numbers look at the ratio in terms of numbers and see what thing that happened and the russians are not fighting like the way for a typical example how you call them the israelis are fighting in gaza where they don't cause so much wreck that it amounts to genocide you eat a carpet bomb with many many kind of doctrines no they're not doing that and at the same time they get the capability of doing that which you need for understand any uh, and i'm sure that's not your real name is um, um, from a strategic point of view the russians are fighting um, the most powerful countries in the world we try to cripple them snuff the air out of them you know put a knee over the neck and snuff the the oxygen out of them and kill them off they have survived this and they are thriving and doing well the russian president is the most popular man in the world today this it, these are all matters of fact and away from that ukraine are the neighbor and they are all like um, um how you call them there's a general name for them but they are all neighbors they are brothers and sisters they share the same tradition and religion you 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 see so it's not an easy thing the reason why they went to war is because somebody tried to snatch ukraine away from them from that sphere of their influence which poses a threat to them if we've stood those threats so then they fight more than how many of the most powerful nations the number one most powerful nation of the world the usa um, um the uk germany and the entire uh, uh, um, eu minus maybe two countries which is um, um, prominent among them is um, um, victor Orbán's um hungary so can you imagine these are the number of nations that you're fighting yeah, both physically, financially, morally, diplomatically, yet you they prevail. Can't you understand that? And if the Russians they want to go haywire, just wreck havoc on them, they would. They get the capacity for do so, but they don't want to do that. As far as they know, they have contained the situation. They are winning. The document for let Ukraine sign say what we've surrendered. We agree to on a terms and condition. It's already lying on the table. You can see what's in the happening in Ukraine. You can see the humiliation of Zelensky. Anyway, not to that we didn't talk about today, but you you tickle me pause because these are things that I'm interested in. I'm very interested in geopolitics. But going back again to um, um we country Sierra Leone, um it became clear that there were massive events of um, um attempted, allegedly allegedly attempted coup in the country and um, people were rounded up, people were killed. We need to acknowledge that. I believe say over 20 people, if not more, were actually killed, including senior officers were killed. From that moment today, when issues relating to potentially those the people and we participated in that particular coup plot, the alleged coup plot, um, is it began for look clear to me that um, people them we um, get affiliation with the opposition party in different respects we get affiliation with the former head of state um, were allegedly involved in this school plot so if they were allegedly involved in this school plot and a good number of them therefore their associates will be people of interest as well and this now include high profile people them including the former head of state i have a different view though and i will table that um shortly just to try to develop the story or present the synopsis so therefore on the basis of those that were arrested and according to government sources confessions made 
by these people. I don't appreciate, neither do I accept confessions made under duress or torture. It's null and void, non sequitur. It's not acceptable. It's not admissible. But of course, now we come to Sierra Leone. This is where we are now. And we go, we go, we go talk about that again a little bit. However, just by virtue of connection, I remember when the, the early part of the thing, the idea that you're not there on the government side in terms of um, probably things like which we they do so in terms of being critical of government and maybe I'll be happy for um, being fortunate for take a photo or had a photo up with a former president. Um, most likely, I would have been implicated, you, you know. And even if I've been there on the side, maybe the president the past, and just go see where the president the past, and I've been there in close proximity to probably the presidential motorcade, and a camera managed for take a picture in which the face did it to um, 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 an escoma or in presidential motorcade, then definitely I would be a person of interest as well. There's nothing wrong in me being a person of interest on the basis of the law or suspicion, but when you begin to create a story and a narrative, we become victimhood, we become um, um, witch hunting, we become um, um, holding these people, you know, yeah, simply because of this connection and not actually doing a proper investigation or putting people under duress and torture, just forget confession, then definitely, it becomes tainted. It becomes questionable. Shout out to um, um, JFK, John Fitzgerald, um, 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 Joseph F. Kamara, I call him John. Um, shout out to him, and I say shout out to him. Many people then um, go begin say, oh, oh, this is especially those that are opposed to. And um, again, I just they um, um, give on a teasers. But I will touch on that again a little bit to as a shout out um, to JFK because he's been doing a very, very magnificent job. And when I say magnificent, I mean magnificent job. We need to understand one thing and like I say again, I will touch on that. And then, you know, yeah, see whether we can disagree or agree. On the basis of them people they are waiting to catch on um, 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 the um, subsequent days that we follow, this um, um, allegedly failed coup where other people um, get concerned because first of all the pronouncement by government was it is um, um, a security breach pardon me and on that basis there some people then say but why they missing a security breach government in the uh, tita uh, government when they do this do that so therefore there are question marks around that um me say if there are question marks and i believe there are many question marks not on the basis because government begin by saying there's a security breach after all a security breach is synonymous with coup plot as government remember say the situation be fluid so as it happened and government gets a responsibility for the brief um, people them and i commend government for that because you have to allay the fears of people and as a government as well you have to show responsibility and obligation to the masses because your first duty is a duty of care um, um, the welfare of your people the well-being of your people so if you've got unknown assailants in the country shooting um, um here and there and lives of people you know has been lost or have been lost this in itself no, no problem so governments when they come out as government, they collect information, so then they pass the information to the people as they may understand them. So it was obviously a security breach and from the beginning. So as government, they compute the evidence with and they gather at the time, and then they become clear, and as then they update we, at some point, it became clear to them that waiting in the happy events of that morning of um, November 26 amounted to a coup out. And then at that point, they say so. Waiting me take umbrage to is um, um, there were a couple of um, um, miscommunications between government officials. Obviously, you would say now one particular government official was supposed to speak at that time in behalf of government. So within that post, they say, or within that department, they say that represents without question or doubt government's position. 
but then there were a couple of other people then where they actually they talk about um, the issue and these were high profile government officials including members of the armed forces of Sierra Leone and ranking officers by the way and senior um, um, department officials <clears throat> They were also weighing in on the issue and then the issue became conflicting in terms of the reports they now will be received so many of us got a little bit confused we did listen to the broadcast um, um from um the veteran sierra leonean uh, bbc stinger journalist or journalist um umaru fofana we give we a clear picture then in the early hours of the entire episode and you know, um, um, give me the opportunity for understand or I had a, a bird's eye view as to what the situation was then because Umaru did say, I mean, this is not a joke. He came across heavily armed men and actually talked to them because he was up and about. Yeah. And then obviously social media always did in charge of these things. So um, um pictures or videos being for image as to what may happen at the country. Some of us who came from that country or from the capital begin to recognize certain places, you know, certain things they have been happening. And some of them, you know, people in within them, um, um, particular places or adjacent to them places there, they send me report as to, you know, waiting been a, been a go on. So we said begin for the calculate. And this is the basis of analysis. You see, in analysis, not everybody can actually do this um, um, skill. This is a kind of um, um, skill, it's a kind of skill set for put together um, um, statistics, data, and um, try for extrapolate, you know, certain things and where you don't get waiting, you think, say, align for make a sense of what you want for talk, then you can come and throw them out to the people. But of course, there are many of us on um, um, that, are that are blogging. And simply because we get the opportunity to um, an internet um, and a gadget, so we can simply just make a lot of noise. And a lot of hot noise was made around this issue. But it's time to keep um, cool ahead. And that's why on this basis as well, received many, many um, um, emails. Some of them I can't even read. I mean, I've got like thousands of, um, not emails rather, um, social media messages, especially on WhatsApp. What is going on? Why are you not weighing on the issue? Let it not be say you end up on this business here. Why you don't go quiet? So let it not be say because you're not in a school, man. All kinds of, and of course, I'm not party to the conflict. I'm not affiliated with MM, the leadership then, um, other than the work way I they do. I'm a blogger and people need to understand this. I think at some point, um, I released a photo of, um, a photo of the hard with um, um, Dr. Samora Kamara, which I was proud to release as um, um, at the time, you know, I had a photo up with um, um, a political leader in the country. So I uh, therefore, you know, yeah, sort of appreciated that. And a couple of days later, I decided for release that photo day. And that photo day just caused real problem on media. And it's like people start jumping to conclusion. However, that's for another day and that's gone anyway. Um, so, on the basis of them people that were arrested, they begin to link this case with Ernest Koroma. You know, small, small talk, small, small talk, so they the talk turn big. So, we know say that by, imagine from November, half half talk, them half half talk up to the point where by January 3rd, January 3rd, formal charges were lodged against the former president, um, Ernest by Koroma. And um, they levy, I think, four offenses against them, charges against them. Um, um, three with four offenses, um, they allege in involvement in a failed attempt by security forces to overthrow the constituted government of the Republic of um, um, Sierra Leone. In trial, being supposed for start um, um, next, um, um, the 17, and then that trial they've been postponed and um, a few other things that begin to happen. We, I want to more from back small because this is the the bottom line of um, 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 this conversation here where we get where we get um, um, tonight. Um, when they charge Anes by Koma, 
Now, the JFK coming to the picture, and earlier on, remember, I said JFK is doing a magnificent job. The magnificent job, before people are begin for misinterpret them, in the young Levy mind, because there are many petty minds in this business and out there. We thought, I mean, all the hate, abuse thrown against um, um, John uh, 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 Kamara, JFK, some of it totally unfounded by people them, who are lunatics, some of them lunatics, some of them pinheaded, some of them complete numbskulls. Why do I say this? First and foremost, the man in profession is, he is a lawyer. I repeat, JFK in profession, Tiwe Ilan, and we need for land for respecting things there where people in land, where people in sit down in a classroom, when they learn something up to a level and become qualified in it, and they are awarded certificates, diplomas, or degrees in that faculty, in that respect, that has to be respected. We don't say things are different now, Mr. Lowe, because the mechanic won't be politician, the politician won't be a medical doctor, and so forth and so on. But me, they say, the idea here is, this man is a professional lawyer and a celebrated lawyer as well. You may have a different view, but he is a celebrated lawyer on a higher pedestal and also political, which makes it a little bit complicated and controversial. But first thing was, he is a lawyer. And as a lawyer, he get a clientele base. And one of the clientele base is the high profile one, if not the most high profile one, we happen for be honest by Koroma, who he was representing. In the representation of Anes Koroma through this ordeal, even before this ordeal of November 26, there were many others in which the man show stellar performance and understanding of what the law is and its applicability. I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot follow him. I follow him page, Twitter page, and other things the way they do, and some of the references the way they can cite, or some of the the legal position them, you know, or brief them way he can or put out there. And then as a consequence of that, you know, Mr. can go read up and you know try to make sense out of it. And I'm completely in tune with him on this basis. So again, this in high profile client we happen for be the former president. And the idea that the man in business as a lawyer now for defend in client, which he is been doing. Hence why I say he is or has been absolutely outstanding and brilliant performance. I mean, it's up to you if you want to deny that or not, but that's exactly what he's been doing. He's been exposing the fallacies around this development by interpretation of the law and the applicability of the law. And remember, I said this is not in business. So you, can, you can't accuse them of malice, or for this, or for that. No, that's not in business in the first place, professionally. And no doubt, I will believe that he's been paid for his professional work representing this high-profile client. Back to Anas by Koroma. The reason why we tie to this, um, this um, broadcast as a strategic win for the Julius Mara Bureau review, which I want to come to now, is Fambulem. I want to let we understand something. One of the problems, them with the, I mean, I'm going to get stoned for this, but as a matter of fact, we let for look at um, um, factually induced things, them. And like I say again, on the basis of the benefit of analysis, and then put them out there. Sometimes as a suggestion, sometimes as a brief, or see how people then will take them. And sometimes on other occasion, or provoke arguments. Okay, or provoke arguments. Here it is. 
The problem with President Bio at this point in time, as I speak, is um, the president is suffer from an issue of legitimacy. I repeat, President Bio the suffer um, a phenomenon which I would describe as illegitimacy. Now, what we can do when we say something, we try to see whether we can back them up and so the audience will understand where we are coming from. This is not being done on the basis of malice or this strong word, misplaced way how the Galeonian elect for user. Most the Galeonians there hate just because you are critical or something, so you hate. And we can't distinguish between envy and jealous and all of these things. But there is no envy here. There is no jealousy here. There is no hate here. It's just on the basis of analysis. If the issues around the gun elections, this is um, back in, um, how you call them, um, in June, okay, are questionable, seriously questionable, not only domestically, because people in Sierra Leone are complaining about that, but because then they're under this tight fist roof, almost like a police state, they have been kept Right as to awaiting the freedom of expression, which the Ghanaians are entitled as a representation of the That's one. Two, it's not only domestically elected, but also international. The results of the last elections, which President Bill allegedly won, are declared by the um, Next year, under controversial circumstances, is even being questioned to this day by the international community. And the international community is one way of being what the international community is simply being in geopolitical terms um, three countries or four countries the UK, US, Germany, France. And then you get all the other clients sitting behind it. And this is being insisted now very, very strongly. And power is shifting. And we've seen the tumultuous times that we are in, both politically, socially, and economically, because power is shifting to the global south. That's where real power is shifting. And then eventually there will be decisions which might most likely give up because the global world order which was designed by the victims of um, 1945, World War II, 19, uh, the end of World War II. Of course, the victims were the United States, um, uh, France, UK, the Allied powers. And that included Russia at the time, or the Soviet Union at the time. But obviously, the Soviet Union was isolated then because there were two powerful friends and sort of ideology, socialism, communism, and capitalism. Capitalism won, and the Soviet lost. The Union of the Soviet Socialist Republic erupted. They became balkanized. All these little countries had to find their own way, and some of them were adopted into the sphere of influence by the West in the East, which made Russia threatening as we speak today. Russia is surrounded by all these little satellite countries which once upon a time was under their domain. Now they are either in NATO or they are in um, the EU. Imagine your enemy right at your doorstep. And the last one was Ukraine, in which they made it clear that Ukraine had a red line for we. We are under no condition. You can check the ambassador, US ambassador to Russia, who is now the CIA director, um, um, Abraham. He wrote a memo then when he was ambassador that we cannot cross this line because of the Russian and no, which is trying to take Ukraine away from the Russian sphere of influence. This has been known some 20 or so years ago. There was a promise that they wouldn't do that. But of course, as you get power, you get drunk. 
and now they are tempted to do kind of Russia business. Now we read that we must accept it. The Russians can cap a bomb and bring the economic capacity if they believe to do that. Today the economy is stronger than ever before. Thank God to so-called sanctions. They've broken away from the US dollar domination and they're building their own system. They put on credit card and they're aligning with China who are the biggest power. And India is on the periphery and not a big power. We see in the global south, that's where power is emerging. Yeah? And they thought they were going to cripple the Russian economy by pulling out all this Western enterprise. But it's just a matter of changing the company's name for the government. You can still go to the global south and get the same government's Remove the Nike or you take an eternal around. This is what's happening. Anyway, um, back to we yeah, man, we conversation. Um Mara Build is not back from this issue of illegitimacy, and I'm mean, gonna talk about uh, this uh, global order. We then said, you know, question the election results and very seriously. And um, in this case, I mean they say normally while the uh, this power, this Western power, you need to respond to the way as I can. The war between two countries, five countries, five states. In this case, there's a bit of a difference because we talk about people who are working very closely with us. They are free democratic guarantors, the political partners, the economic partners. And this includes the very United States, the United Kingdom, China. Russia, Germany, and many other countries, Ireland, and get an organization that they want to help. They also help for disputes because they were on the ground. So this is what I mean by being a diplomat. You can't have all these questions around you. And especially so when your economy depends on the kind of market or, or, or dispensation of people that, like we, we're not the union, but happen to be the US. We know that tax you will see. Some of it's really the same long and just because you are said to say, oh, we will fund the union election. But it's not only about elections, but you can't even fund the union elections. Anyway, because funding new elections just means that you don't want to let other people do not for new elections. And also that it dictates the terms of the outcome. And all they want to do is to make sure that the process is open, transparent, is fair, at least to some degree. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent. So hence there we are. So there's an issue of legitimacy in the is struggling with this issue up to this day. This is serious. As we speak, there are ongoing peace talks. We try to fight talk. We may not know the here and know the Because the idea is if you want to tell us that we are not doing right, we are not right, and the government is not going to agree. Because in this case, in this case, the government will turn out to be the aggressor. And then for remedy the situation, the aggressor will have to continue for saying, oh, yes, okay. I agree to this. I no. Instead, what they are doing, they are all playing tricks. You know, this Jedi mind trick with the union. This can say that. They can say that. Then, then just they go. You see, the, you see the thing? Then just they go. Now, we will be on the track of that because we have the main issue of the day. And then, when we go to the events of November 26, happen. And that just distract me from the main issue. What will you try to talk about peace? How we can bring peace in the country and probably bring these two parties then together so they can work for the common good for the country and its people. But it's not enough for be the case because something else don't come. In which, and this is why people became suspicious, in which the larger body of people being suspect, being held, being charged. In this coup, alleged coup, our people them will largely belong to the All People's Congress by different ways, shape, or form. So either people are members, or either people are supporters, sympathizers, or happen to have worked under the government of Corona, directly or indirectly to the former president. So now a matter of circumstances, some of them, I mean, this president, the ex-president is being indicted or charged on this particular issue. 
say too many bodyguards of yours are involved. And I'm sure say, the government could not get one or two evidence against another we'll call that. And the evidence what they talk about is um, communication, not on the basis of the coup. Because I'm sure he ain't inform a bodyguard and then they talk. Sometimes somebody go call him. And I sure they away from the talk as well. There might be transactions. Some people don't go broke, some bodyguards they don't get money. And um, the man being generous and call him, oh, the picking and not get food for each today, oh, uh, the rent money, no day, this, that. And he transfer money to them, give them money. So the government will have seen this kind of stuff. And potentially we want to use them as incriminating evidence that the former president was in touch with these people. And he used these people, them, them presence, I mean, a connection with them, or do money transfers, which potentially they want to link to the alleged group that they may have used, or these transfers of money was meant to be used for intel purposes and other logistics in carrying out the alleged coup of November 26th, period. And I'm just making a summation of what I think potentially could be. Because I don't think, say, you know, a yeah, proper hard evidence day. And the question I've been asking since Anas Kumar in name begin for filter into this alleged coup plot is, what will it benefit the former president of the Republic? A man who, by many degrees, many definitions, is a statesman. Of course, people they want ridicule him um, by saying that he is not. Where, well, of course, he is, if we understand the values of a statesman. And one of the most key ones we make such a title can be bequeathed to this man, ascribed to this man, is A. And I'm saying this not out of love for the former president, but just out of a matter of fact. That's why I'm strenuously trying to make the point so that even the death allegory will hear. And this is, he ruled for 10 years plus. He give power, he hand over power. We know the controversy is around the power, or some of it around the power at the time. But the bottom line is, government transfer power from one party or from one government to another, another opposition party. Now, if you not think say this is a big deal, then you need some medication for your head. One government, an African government, 10 years, well consolidated, still hugely popular, but respected the constitution despite waiting people in the tribe for say, oh, it be one, no, no, another part, it be one business, not to Baba Lao business at the not to looking glass or looking gun business at the I am saying things which are a matter of fact out there which we can refer to, we can compute, add, deduct, and adduce, and then we make a reasoned opinion out of it. So he was a head of state for 10 years, facts, plus facts. There was an election, fact. He lost the elections to an opposition, and there was a smooth transfer of power to the opposition. Fact. Now, this man's left power for six years, although the tribe will still make him the center of power in a controversial, in a controversial way. And I can understand why. I will leave this explanation for another day. But the bottom line is, after six years, he still been mentioned in the circle to a point where the last election may come. The current president, the current president, okay, some people in Sydney don't recognize them, and I talk about issues of legitimacy. That does not mean I won't call him the current president. He is the president. He's conducting. And I want to let people then look at look at him from this technical perspective. I'm not saying that you should change your minds, but the man is sitting in the seat of power. He has been sworn in. Huh? 
by the constituted authority at the time. Of course, they're not in the no fire I'm under dubious circumstances that they talk about the chief justice. But now in me get that responsibility. But swear the president in the elected president, despite the controversial circumstances, he was sworn in. And immediately when that chief justice they swear I'm in, he is the head of state. He is. Despite under controversial uh, uh, terms and conditions, he is the head of state. He sits in the throne of power. He's conducting the business of head of state of the country. The country is not head of stateless. It has an head of state, and that head of state is His Excellency Julius Madabi. You can attach all the other things to in head of state ship, which is he won a country. He said he won a controversial elections. He's um, um, appointed a uh, next director or chairperson. Declared him. Everything was within the boundaries of the law, questionable as it is. But the next chairman report announced the result under dubious circumstances. Did so, but then I demand him win. The chief justice really swear he went automatically as soon as he swear in him happened that very moment. Day, as soon as he happened automatically the man is the head of state and this is where he stands today so far you understand una idea along this line yes there's a controversy but this is it so we have to find a way on how we deal with this issue despite um, um, the inconvenience but we can't be in self-denial of what the realities are which you really grab and see every morning and get your wishes you know but the point here is, Anas Koma did rule for 10 years plus. He hand over power to Judas Madabio, and then he took a back seat. During that period, a lot of things happened. Some of it right under in most. Remember the massacre na, na Makini, the stronghold of the opposition party then and now, which is in Makini, where the former uh, head of state resides where he resides. And God alone knows, probably he was there on that day when the events unfold, when the massacre, they begin them, take thousands of them and bring them to the and free them, jail them, you know, and then people like therefore begin to run up and down and begin beg for, you know, for their release and etc. Some of them were held for months, tortured, beaten. So can you see Uthai are they come up, are they come up from? So now, after six years, my question is, waiting it will benefit an escoma for back support, a cool plot, where they bring a man in kind of power. Because a lot of the people that were seeing involved are soldiers, ex-soldiers and soldiers. And God alone knows who that else on the school. What would it have benefited him in my humble opinion, he get much more for loss associating himself with a coup plot, trying to bring somebody in power through the barrel of the gun, whereas he's got these democratic credentials, which I just highlight a few seconds ago. A statesmanship was accorded him on the global level. Now, he made a say, if you not understand that power passed from one government to another, not the same party, opposition, from the ruling party to the opposition, in a smooth transfer of power, which this man led, organized, and moved smoothly, and took the back seat. And then on that basis, day, the international community recognized them and dignified them. Because during that period, they will be the rule. Now, the term where they actively they try to do away with coup plot, them will be rampant on the continent. And during that 10 years, then they, you could barely see coup plots. Although this ugly head don't emerge again, it don't rear in head. You know, coup plot here, coup plot there. I think we've had seven or eight in the continent so far. But, now that big basis, they then give them, you know, statesmanship. So he could travel the world well respected. And this was also respected um, um, for, I mean, respect for Salon. Because 
what he was doing was almost like ambassador at large. Go to them, take, take one day away, then they appoint a, 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 um, ambassador for this, ambassador. People that will not even get gravitas, will not even get weight. Now, then, then they appoint for represent the, the country. I mean, some of them, no, no offense, but riffraffs. Just because they get political connection, I mean, you give them something like a sober job or represent your country outside. What are they going to say? I mean, some of these people, I'm not going to call names. You know them. You you designate them as ambassador at large, ambassador for this, ambassador of goodwill for go negotiate contract or investment or what. I mean, are you serious? Who's pathway the, them politicians they have to live with down to? So you get a towering figure a very charismatic figure as the former head of state, dignified and a statesman, way being a fly the country in flag, but all them good and the way being go. So the man they represent democracy, not the world, by going around and organizing elections and observing them and making sure that the outcome meets the people in the mandate. Then we they say that in your country, he, they try to organize a coup plot, in other words, a barrel of the gun for you sub power undemocratically. I mean, for figure this in your head. Because I'm trying to figure this in my head, I still can't get around this. I really can't get around this. So is it guilt by association? Oh yeah, these were my bodyguards. So these adults can't do their own thing. Yes, I'm not above the law. I can be questioned. I can be called in to answer questions. Why not? But then, really, 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 we don't see some connection there. But here's the interesting thing. Whilst all of this, they on go, we understand, say, um, Nigeria, because Nigeria represents ECOWAS. And it will be unfair for us in Nigeria. So let me say echo us. But Nigeria, and then they are the bullhorn, and then they are the, the thrust, the forward, you know, your part of echo us. But they are giants, by the way. Giants. Then see, then they try to get the ex president out. And remember, all the half acting and beyond the on go, all the half acting and beyond the on go, with the same honest man. And like I've been saying, honest Koroma, God, no sounds. Oh, man. Sound is cracking. Is there any sound now, please? Is there any sound? Okay, sound. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Site. Thank you. I hope you don't miss this massive part of having the tripod for broke this down. Um, hopefully, anyway, we we'll get time. But many thanks for that. Shout out to Usman Conte. Shout out to David Kamara. I mean, you see, you always get good people watching your back, and away from that, they are also interested in the analysis, I am sure. Um I almost, you, you know, I mean, this put me off that I almost lost sense of which I believe. Okay, I was talking about ECOWAS. So Nigeria, they now the thrust of ECOWAS. So ECOWAS begin to negotiate a way out for the former president. Now, I have been making this argument. And, of course, I'm always in argument both out there and on media. So, I mean, you can see the vain banality in some of we Sierra Leoneans. There. No wonder the country continue for suffer. No wonder politicians, them of all strike, continue for, you know, you take with for a jolly ride. Can you imagine? Yeah? Because when they see these things, then they unfold before we eyes. And instead of us trying to take a step back away from most likely um, tribal connections, regional connections, party connections, or 
individual connections and think about country first, which is lacking in most of my conversation with people. Then, this is what I notice. They either put party force over country, individual force over country, tribe force over country, or region force over country, instead of the other way around, country first. I mean, if we can think country first, a lot of the things then, you know, it will be different. Because when politicians tell us something, we many a times, now big full business, now big full talk, but then no say they can big full some of we, we go along because we are not thinking about party first. For example, they're dividing us on a north and south axis, you know, a sort of division, or on a tribal or regional basis, as if, you know, they want to introduce some, <clears throat> some ethno-tribal business, you know, in the country, which is very dangerous. It's almost like religiosity. Christian people say they're more powerful than Muslim or Muslim, you know, instead of a secular state in which everybody can practice their religion and be protected by the law. But then the law tends to protect one set of people and forget one another. Sound not bad, and the monologue is very interesting and logical. Thank you, Mr. C.C. Um, yeah. And this is the way that we are kind of going down. And the appeal is the Galileans will deviate from when they say not support party, when they say don't be your tribe that you are, when they say be a Sigalonian first and foremost, be a Sigalonian first and foremost, stop, stop for waiver, be principle. And then they say principle doesn't wave because you can wave and adjust, like Nelson Mandela once said anyway. You lack principle and you lack leadership if it depends on who that you they talk to, now so you they, you they adapt you, you know, yeah, yourself. In other words, you don't get a stance. In this case, a Sierra Leonean first before anything else. So we're posting they can't tell you some nonsense about South, South, East, not Northwest. Does it include a Sierra Leonean thing first? Is it Sierra Leonean first? That's very, very interesting. But no, this is not the case. And hence, they continue for play on we minds. So even so, that there is more poverty in the country today, like I've been saying, you get people away, they argue on a different basis. We clearly, yesterday, be better past today. And for solve the problem, it means that you get to admit that this is a fact. You cannot be in denial of facts. You cannot have your set of facts. This is a fact. Yesterday, you can look at the economy. Yesterday, you can look at the level of employment. Yesterday, you can look at income. You can look at residual income. You can look at um, um, welfare. You can look at family. You can look at affordability. You know, many of these things. Today, this is not the case. But instead of us admitting that this is not the case, I mean, there is poverty and it's very alarming because we they support the party in power or because we they support the head of state. Some people can say, well, we know to the party they support. I can't understand this for goodness sake. Not to the party they support. Now the man where they head the party. You don't get it. They kind of lunacy in the upper Sierra Leone and then once upon a time, the anthem of education. Now with this, social propaganda all over the place. A, a, a free and fair education or quality education. I mean, when you talk about this and critique this, then of course, because you did against the SLPP government, I think the government is not all ours. The good benefit will benefit everybody. And this is why we say they are doing first. The issue about poverty the economy, if it's not all, everything else is a catastrophe. The issue of justice and fair play, if it is not addressed, everything else is a catastrophe. And this is what we see. So, 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 chat, man, them. Now you get with government, you now they articulate policies. Well, build airport, we cost we tens of millions where we have to pay within a period of time. And so as I understand, even the time frame, and it will make sense. I'm not seeing the official version yet, 
the the payment time has been increased because after they do a survey and an evaluation assessment of the entire project based on the economy which is now flat line no growth at all we can't pay the money day in the 25 years for when we sign the contract so they understand some five or eight years has been added making it either 30 or 33 years. This is on top of the taxation with the non they impose now because government needs to generate money out of this project as well. But the main project money, I mean, anything we link on it, I think the agreement on it, it goes to the people that we make the airport. Well, you get less flights to the Canada country. And we did raise that alarm. You get uh, um, people that now, you can call them uh, uh, not patriotic. You, the government, you need to hold yourself accountable in the first place before you point fingers at, point fingers at your citizens for traveling to other airports, which is affordable for them. You're not putting monies in their pocket. People work for their hard earned money. They're not getting any benefit back. Tina, they sweet them at the country. And then they for spend this excessive sum just for go home or prove say, yes, I'm a Sierra Leonean. Well, flying to another country before you come inside your country, not me say you're not Sierra Leonean. You are still a Sierra Leonean. And a very good one because you're flying home. And I know because I've been there several times that every time when we go home, it costs we hundreds, if not thousands, depending on the shape size of your family. So now you need to make the necessary improvements and improvements a day. Now they depend big pull some other money and they talk about bridge. They talk about bridge cost $1.5 billion. And I mean, I don't know whether people don't understand money or not. You know, those, those way they appreciate and accept this instead of questioning them. People are falling heads over here with this idea, this ludicrous lie lie, as they call it, you know, yeah, as it's supposed to be. $1.5 billion bridge. <laughs> I mean, if you think say this is true, I will talk with the mayor of London, C D Khan, you know, yeah, for help me so I can get one of them old bridges in London where we will go sell to a uh, government of Salvo. 1.5 billion just for two people and on project. I mean, these are all the underlying problems where they lead up to chaos and mayhem. And we've seen that many a times if people were gainfully employed, when you're busy and you get everything for leave for. Then things that they way they cause mayhem and trouble in the country, people are far away, and they distance themselves away from them kind of things and they because you get much more for lose. You are employed, you get family, you get things that are ongoing which are positive in your life. In the absence of this, now chaos now you will continue for see. These are the things that you see under the November 26, where people that we want for can you sub power allegedly. Go, 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 explain to the general public that this is the case. And some people are going to fall for it. Why? Because you forced business of you people who are not in welfare, it's not been sought. Hence, I say social propaganda. You talk about um, um, school quality, uh, free and quality education. I mean, the concept is a noble concept. And this is how we get carried away. So, yes, we build the airport. Doesn't mind no matter at which cost. Is this a uh, shiny object on the hill? That to look big, or you get a solar power them. So you get this project with a light like a lantern. I don't know if you see lantern. How magnificent it can be. Then this the whole go up and salon a lantern can come on the night. Different lights, the design, how wonderful. If you buy like Disneyland, magic land. This is what it looks like. So people get carried away, you know, yeah, with that. But what is the economic cost? Now that they talk about bring 1.5 million, I mean, are you kidding us? Free quality education. Like I say, the concept is a noble one. I mean, I'm a benefactor of one of the the best times in we education in our country. Although somebody been doubt me at some time when I talk about me ride train and many, many times, hundreds of times before train finally closed down in 1974. I think the positive you'll see. I'm fairly younger, you know, than probably not even born at the because I'm denied to hurt from me. But this is within the market. So you can proceed the back to that when you talk about free and quality education, you can proceed the A. You can forget empowerment. Empowerment is within the green line empowerment. If you're going to school with empty belly, or you don't even get money for sending you to school, 
know, we're calling it for paid transport or for make lunch for you. Yes, they, they talk about free feeding, but you they talk about money coming into the home. And if you know they, what happens? So this good concept with this president they talk about when a flagship program for develop human development index, which is a good thing for a country we want to go before. But it is all but just a name. This is a fact. Because prostitution is up on the country. The country, right? This is given a fact. Prostitution is up in the country. Massive. Drug abuse is up in the country. Infant mortality is up in the country. Mothers are still dying. Pregnant mothers from giving birth. These are all economic reasons. Wait time to whatever you want to do. It's not working. And as they mention this, you get for coming in subsequent programs and our first program hints are compared for mention this. I will not be able to talk until the 22nd today. But all of this, they cause the problem within the country. And here is the thing. So, if we look at um, uh, the 1965 um, um, law, um, uh, police act, or whatever they call it, I mean, just one site fan bullet. Let's see if I'm able to share my screen quickly. Una pardon me quickly. Let's see if I'm able to share my screen because I want to share this particular part with a uh, fan bullet. Let we able to see. Um, let we able to see something. What we want to let una self self see. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Now this now we want to share about we law and this now 79 section 79 one the reason why i didn't mention this like, uh, uh, where are you no don't lost my soul 79 i'm with me laughing and quick oh yeah yeah it is yeah it is yeah it is yeah it is let me zoom on i should say one of the eh? yeah i should say from the cm it talks about a person charged with murder or treason or treason rather shall not be admitted to bail except by a judge i want to repeat that that is when a bail is granted under the section when a bill is granted section 79 1 a person charged with murder or treason shall not be admitted to bail except by a judge this is important in we conversation very very important and for reasons we I suppose the family and self are aware because the former president is also, I mean, a fall under this category in which it became a controversy as well on whether a person charged with treason or whether the offense of treason generally is a billable offense. I never thought that it was a billable offense, that it can be billed, but you can see that by a judge. So it is something of discretion. But this is what is again sort of controversial to me that a former president was in the end for medical reasons, so it was said, for medical reasons, had to leave in a deal brokered by ECOWAS. Remember the letter echo was right to seek uh, uh, um, the former president into the custody of it became a letter of controversy again as well <laughs> of course everything as alone a controversy because the interpretations become many and sometimes this is championed by government by the way um shout out to um, um what the brother name the brother we recently um, um Resigned Solomon Jamiru Solo. I mean, this is unheard of. Now, pardon me for this quick break. This is unheard of. Now, we country <laughs> a government minister, a government official resigned. Resigned. Goodness me. I mean, I'm keen on knowing what really happened. But I commend the brother because things are not going well. There is chaos within this government, there is chaos. I mean, sometimes you see the plaba is in the open, both internally and externally. You see that with the outgoing former U.S. ambassador 
haunt. There was this problem with haunt. There's also a problem with this new U.S. ambassador. Because why? The center of gravity has a problem. And if the center of gravity has a problem, then imagine outside people and for mass and whole. And not they. So there's a struggle. There's this constant struggle that is ongoing. Things are not just right now in country. Let's be honest about this. Shout out to Solomon Jamiru. So Nigeria decided to take hold of the stick and the excuse for the president, the former president, for go seek medical attention. One has to wonder, you know, whether medical attention can be sought. Of course, it can be sought in Nigeria. But in Nigeria, the former president will go for a medical stuff. No, it was never in Nigeria. I think unless in place of um, a medical checkup is in Germany. I hope I get that right because on one or two occasions, I know that his regular medical checkup was being done in Germany, not in Nigeria. So this is the controversy for me here where I pick up in which Nigeria asks for the former president to be taken out on the basis. Yes, Mr. Owell, how are you? Long time no see, brother. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody, by the way. I wish everybody a prosperous New Year. Um, not to Nigeria, that probably they go for a um, checkup. So the mix match here is, and waiting can confuse me, I must say, is whilst the trial is supposed to start, I believe on January 17, the postponer based on the ex president in absence. But the current president, Mada Bio, promised we say that this trial will resume on March 6. And the person will confirm this now one of President Bio, I mean President, ex-president Koroma in lawyer Adema Koli. I will try, I will really try hard for try forget Adema Koli for come on the program, for can't explain to we this process because I'm sure say Sierra Union's number one for no. And Adema Koli is a friend, I consider him to be a friend of the platform. And away from being a friend of the platform, these are issues that they collect for inform the Sierra Leonean public through different annals of social media. And this is one of them we will make available, we will avail this to them for use. I will be in, in, in contact with lawyer um, um, Adema Kali for can explain to we this. But I believe say, the March 6 resumption is on the basis that the, pre the former president has gone for this medical checkup. Um, we will last for three months. Imagine three months medical checkup. <laughs> when they see the twist and turn inside, <laughs> the question will be, will he return? Or will there be different things? But some of the things that will happen is President Bill did say, and I'm quoting President Bill, on the basis of um, giving passage to um, um, former President um, um, Anesco President Yossi, it reinforces our position that the trial is not a political witch hunt, but one aimed at unraveling the truth behind the events, unquote. In that event, we know that 21 people lost their lives and over 2,000 prisoners escaped. How many of them don't return or they don't catch back? We don't know. We've not been briefed yet. Um, I'm mean, going give you drips and drafts. Um, but then they say the president, in, the ex president in trial, will resume back in March 6. And a lawyer at the Macaulay, I don't understand, Naeem confirmed this. Um, of course, former president Kouma, we, I think he don't want 70 years now, he denied all the charges them with a levy against him. And this is serious. So, the two things that we may take from this again. I mean, this immediate one regarding the extraction from this chaos where they happen is Nigeria offer for host them on a temporary basis. I mean, there is a conflicting point in waiting Nigeria as for waiting the letter say or the other things that we attach to the letter. Living on a medical basis, Nigeria offering to host them for host them on a temporary basis. And of course, 
the ex president be happy for accept that offer because of police confusion. Um, um, we don't go on, but it's critical for Mick Pambul and Nose that before it they accept the condition, I mean, before it they accept, um, um waiting. Echo has been tried for help and wait for extra time or more away from this chaos where they happen. It put a condition down that all, and I'm quoting this, this is not from the former president, all legal and administrative procedures on court against him, then for drop up. All then for drop up. Now that basically they say he go agree or go. I don't think those charges were dropped, but there must have been deliberation. And probably these are things that we will never know. We'll try for contact with sources there again for see whether we'll get um, a little bit inside view as to what in transpired. But what in maybe no see is um, President Koroma, former President Koroma, is a high value, high value individual. So it's not like the others, we are of low value, where they can keep or even rot in a jail. No, this cannot happen. Although Marabio can intend for do that, and it don't show intention on many occasions for do this. And let me just explain how and why I say so. I think I've been beginning at first. <laughs> let, me, let me see, somebody don't put some funny comments. Um, coconut, coconut. Happy New Year to all from the East Asia. Wow, East Asia. Well done, East Asia. Many thanks for watching. And please help share with platform now, East Asia. Thank you so much for watching. Um, but that name, Dave. <laughs> coconut, coconut. <laughs> um, first of all, President Koroma, I mean, I speak in glowing, in glowing terms of um, the former president. But everything what they say is, um, um, is factual. President Koroma, ex-president Koroma, um, na man we hugely charismatic, hugely charismatic, still popular by some estimate, one of the most popular, if not the most popular politician to this day in Sierra Leone. And the worst thing is, despite his feelings and shortcomings, the 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 baggages of the MM bio regime has made this man even more popular. Like we say, yesterday been better past today. The only people that were in denial are two sets of people. Eh? They want them way now rabid supporters them of the regime. We know the fact, and I think see, a freeze been come up for them suffer posh. And this is like a few years ago. The reality is. The situation of the economy is terrible. I think the exchange rates today in London, if it's not 28 or 29, I don't even know how much. How much. I just sent money home a few days ago. It was um, 28. I know that for sure because I sent money home. And um, and can you imagine that local currency as opposed to uh, Forex, that kind of rates, which means that, I mean, affordability is going to be really, really difficult and it's going to be restricted most likely to the political elite. So now that I've been saying, the suffering of the people is so massive that it's bare for the eyes to see that other projects and where you embark on or intend for embark on, they're not having the intended effect. And one of the most glorious one where I say the concept is noble, but the the rolling out of it, the 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 way how it's being you know carried out, it's gonna be difficult for it to have the desired effect and this is not the president in flagship program and this again factor the first lady inside in your program as well when the hands of our girls i mean the rate of prostitution is up because people cannot afford and when you can't afford in a country these are the things that happen people then get for resorts to all kind means you citizen them you know and then get this low mental attitude then get this low kind of thoughts about themselves because they get for thin means and ways for kind of survive and this is what's happening kukriba father they all over the place i mean i haven't been there in a while but obviously i do get everyday reports some of them pictures that are sent to me which i have on my desktop now you know so these are the conditions so how can you equate the poverty level with the school picking them we're supposed for dinner school and hands off our girls out there at those tender age you, you know they do prostitution just forget means of survival all the bad in the club then 
um, around the place. So the political elites, the handful of them that they in charge because now they get money, now they pot the boil, now they pot no get hole, now they kitchen, now they smoke the come on, now they good smell the come on. So everything else is attracted to them. They're very few people. And the hatredness is just developing. The unpopularity is just developing because you cannot make the end, you cannot make ends meet for the people. So you can't, you, you know, you get crash everything or go back, get, you know, you're like everything, especially the economy. Inflation rate. I mean, today you buy this, tomorrow you come, you don't go up. You get to go back again, go out for the money and come. I mean, this cannot be, it, 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 cannot, it cannot be right. So now see the complete impact that we have been talk about regarding government and um, um, an Escoma and how people turn around and try to lump them inside, inside the coup and how ECOWAS come and can't extract them because in a high value individual, they will always come for cancer and I've been mean, telling them how Marabio from day one, not want this guy in this country. Because this guy be the overshadow. I mean, let me share a story with you guys. Okay. Let me share a story with you guys. This no one's an escoman at the country. This goes back like the early part of Madabio in, in Fox Town. An escoman, as usual, go out of the country one time. And upon his return, he gets stuck in Guinea because Madabio actually refused an entry into the country. This was in closed circle, not public, but this is a real story. SLPP, they listen, APC, they listen, some big boys in the listen, one or two of them are privy to the story. And as Koma got stuck in Guinea, because Madabio <clears throat> will not permit him to come inside the country. Now, block him, not block him, so. <laughs> and Madabio, na, na, na talk bad man. <laughs> So a, a blocker, and a school must spend over a month in Guinea. The former president of Guinea, where they overthrew, where the party, I'll think his name. <laughs> Let's see no more time. Forget Conde, Alpha Conde, yes. Of course, we need to understand that inside the union, as they talk about in West Africa, but limited to ECOWAS. I mean, not ECOWAS, um, Mano River Union. Guinea happened for be the senior. And most especially, the relationship between Guinea and Sierra Leone. Guinea, of course, is the senior party to that relationship in many respects, in terms of population, in terms of business, economics, finance, and you name it. Guinea is the senior one. And they will go buy with goods, and they will go buy buy for cancer cell, and what have you. And we share a long border with them, and we've got a long history. And uh, Guinea get more senior military than ours, well equipped, far more than ours, uh, more populated, far more than ours. So with all the metric there, where you use them for measure, Guinea is the senior border. That, that partner is someone, Marabio, Marabio go Guinea. And the power broker, some deal between them, some pieces. Me man, come on, man. So why, you know what, <laughs> let this guy go back? I mean, it's not exactly what he said, but this is what happened. Your man blocked him from coming. And um, 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 the former Guinean president, Alpha Conde, someone, and they use the word someone, because someone is not something that you use between heads of states. No. But in this case, you must say, well, can I, and I make I use the analogy of seniority within the relationship? Because then, you can order somebody say bo, bo, fellow Bokano and Lokanto. So that's what happened anyway. They call up over and then he go there and then the part broke out some peace between he and Anaskoma and say, bo, you are let this man go. Bo. Yeah. Of course, um, um Conde be get a way in the authority somehow and common sense, you know, yeah, to Mother Bio. Say, bo, this is not go right, it's not gonna look well. After all, XYZ. So Mother Bio. Being for allow under pressure from Guinea, allow Anescoma for, for going. And I can give you now, I don't remember the date again, but I will give you now the instance so when I go able to pick up from that and the way thing happened. But when they don't talk this thing done, as usual, if I don't make peace, for cement the peace, 
most likely it can be a handshake. So the pa asked them for do handshake. And as Koma hold the hand out, Madabio refused for shaking hand. So Madabio go on TV and say, that man is not to be paddy. This is not a joke. And this goes back. And the point that I'm trying to make is, they don't tell you Madabio want to lay hands on this guy, most likely get him out of the country. Most likely. Because I've shot the another one for jail, I'm not to intention on for jail. I'm. But just get him out because he always feel safe. This guy, they undermine and they overpower him. Mother be the inside convoy, protected by heavy soldier them. And the school be driving motor car. Crowds are following him. If he mistake candle, it's a problem. I mean, if you self step not be head of state, you will get sleepless night. How do you deal with this guy? You know, I mean, he's no longer the head of state, but he's still the command crowds. That was worrying for uh, uh, GMB at the time. So anyway, they broke out this peace deal between them. And then... When finally unless they come in and across the cross the border with the with in car and motorcade, they come inside. That come where they come inside. As it come, now so different motorcade and they join them, including their Okada. They imagine from Guinea all the way to Makini. <laughs> so it turned out for be a very heavy. And when I say heavy, and you know, shot on I go record because videos made the rounds at the time, which was not intentional. Now, people have I been mean, enjoying them on, it, on their own volition. As they pass this village, would I get Okada with petrol? Boop, it jump be in. Would I get Jeep? Would I get this? They all join in the melee and all the way escort them to Makini. That did not go down well with Marabio at all. It did not go down well with Marabio at all. So, the point here is Marabio, it don't say where they try to get Anes out of the country or get hold of them and quiet them down. Another incident will happen is in recent time is the elections. I mean, he said many things against the former head of state. People and they blame say, well, I mean, he encourage him. Well, again, if he encourage him, now because he been one user politically, but the guy turned out for outsmart him and he's now the head of state, by the way. <laughs> There's no waiting and talk between yourself. But here is the point. Uh, in recent times, this is not the gun election, Marabio stood before a crowd of faithful lawyers. And then he say, he speak in unusual presidential language. Way as the election been drawn near, you can detect the tension so he ungloved in other words he pulled the mask of diplomacy and quietness and what have you we be see mother beauty dance i mean this is unusual of this guy because he's normally measured he's normally cool calm and to me i don't know him personally of course but he looks conservative you know to me and those who know i'm say they agree with me opinion on that basis, you know, conservative. So in, in other words, a man of that kind, as to the conservatism where they talk about his cool calm, calculated is, he's always calculating, augmenting, thinking, planning <laughs> in that head of his. Because you get life in you. So when you sit down, if you know you talk, you're thinking. He went on the public platform and spoke so disrespectfully of a former colleague, a presidential uh, 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 colleague, former head of state. He called him Bobo. I'm sure he said Bobo. But in other words, this is what he said at La Paraphrase. Big man, okay, yeah, big man. We no one act like big man, or we know they act like big man. With a treat and like Bobo, of course, you know, means in words, he call out the former president and Escoma. And that was vicious. That was a vicious attack. But that shows the end game. And that shows how desperate Madabio was at that point. And that shows everything we don't to talk about in terms of him not being one time at the scene at all, because this guy be always the out player. You know, and let's get this presence. Now, high man. He looks good. Uh, he's charismatic. And these are the attributes that you suppose forget. 
And all of this is the opposite of Julius Marabio. So every time this guy steals the show. So why me go on for the entertain you? Why me go on for you to come meet me, say for me to go meet you or you there around and you the organize? No, I have to find a way to take you down. So all of this lead we to November 26th, we finally, finally, and this is why I say a strategic victory for Marabio. If Anesco Omar return, I mean, I'm not ruling that out. It might be under a set of different circumstances because things will have died down a little bit. But I was surprised at in return one because I believe see, part of the conversation or the negotiation now for extract this man come all in this place. I mean, we can waive the charges. The idea that he's gone, that we can't try him any day out of the country. Um, we can take, I can take that. That's not a view now. I'm speaking in matter views, you know, it's sort of a um, uh, mind. I can take that. But you guys can have it. So this is something I believe they may not agree to. But call in agency, in your corner, in your people, they may need to explain that. Because some of the people may not become so testy. You know, I see we don't hold on so this why I'm not jail and they rotting. We need the left arm, you know, this, that, and one of you. And some of these people come up from high place sources then. And you therefore believe um, believe that in some way, because you already know from the analysis what I don't make that this man be one lay hand on this man a long time ago for quiet time. And away from jailing them, which was going to be always difficult, but forget them out of the country. I mean, this guy was flying in and out, although they represent the country where they go do in election observation. The Stigalion always day on the TV in MSMs, mainstream media outlets, cable channels, CNN, um, MSNBC, NBC, um, um, RT, the BBC, Al Jazeera, Sky. An election has been conducted today in the West African state of XYZ. Part of the delegation that observed the elections was former president of Sierra Leone, Anes Baikoroma, who is flying the flag of Sierra Leone, was there as the chief election observer. I mean, this is what you hear news after news. So it wasn't going down well. This made the man still relevant, not the limelight. So at least money for the outside way, they do this in thing. So I'm sure that they negotiated something along those lines, and then we don't reach that conclusion there some time ago. Because if it's difficult, the reason I can always say, and as Thomas sit on us alone, now because he get guarantee. So when I can make that argument the day, now on that same basis, then because he get guarantee from certain quarters, powerful people, the Tabo Beckys, the... Uh, um, um, are you call them the John Kufos? I think he don't die now. The Obasanjos, these are very powerful men, no longer head of state in their respective countries, but are well respected and still they carry the mantle and they make decisions. These are the people effectively waiting and guarantee. And then guaranteed and they were based on the fact that there was a transfer of government, democratically smooth transfer from one government to another. Not the same government in terms of party, but from the ruling government to the opposition will win the election. Smooth transfer of power. Even Mother Bureau mentioned that many a times. When you do this, you become a respected person and you attain the program of being a statesman and depending on the way how you really carry yourself. But here is the thing. Another thing when Mother Bureau succeed in doing, okay, where I say, a strategic win for the Julius Marabio regime or for Julius Marabio himself is they've tarnished Anes Koroma in character. Now, did you hear me? They have managed to tarnish Anes Koroma smear in character, in name. I mean, you get to understand waiting at your CHS now and put them in line with all waiting, I don't talk in this analysis, but understand this final part of conclusion what I can't do, but say, 
one of the reasons why we say a strategic victory for um, um, Madabio is they have managed for smear, assassinate the character of Anes Koroma. Both internally, of course, you get people that will not believe, but at the same time, there's always this division and you get people that we believe. You get people that we will go to the end of the art and say, no, 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 this is not true. And you get people that we will say, and in fact, this is what is ongoing. But the bottom line is they've managed to smear him. They've connected him to the coup. And if this man was a statesman, if this man was a Democrat who was going around and observing, conducting democratic elections in several countries, for which he was well respected even in European or Western capitals and in um, um, uh, East Asian capitals. That has been dented seriously. And I want to consider that. Maybe some of us did not consider that prior to this broadcast, but this is one other thing where Madame Bureau don't succeed in doing, damaging the reputation of his former colleague and uh, former um, presidential colleague. Pambulem. If Anas Koroma return, like I say, I will be baffled. Um, so so Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Peace, Sarah Peace, or Sarah, maybe with the double R, she say it's a lie. And since the comment just come, uh, I go one thing see now waiting I say about Anas Koroma, his name being smeared. Um, um, maybe now that the sister they say it's a lie. But I don't know why you would say, if that's what you're referring to, I don't know why you would say so. Because if you get good character, and then that character, they turn bad for some reason, maybe they lie on you and these things happen. Let me say they even lie on them. But he has to prove that this is not in the non to run. And the situation not complete. Remember I said before the ex-president leave, I just read that passage day basically to the viewer then. He say, before I go, we echo, echo was trying to get them out. He say, before I go, one of the conditions that we underscore Maggie, now for drop all charges against her. Because these charges are serious. Because they hang over you like a burden in the day with you. So the idea that you've not been given the opportunity, whatever happened inside the weather, then you're not given the opportunity for cleaning name, to attend the trial and cleaning name then that in itself is a problem because you are being charged. You have not been able to clear your name. So that charges, they still hang on you. And remember, they say the conversation or the trial will continue when they expect them for return by March 6. Now there's a possibility, say, you go return. For me, it's 70, 75, 25, 70, 30. But yes, there is a possibility that he will return. It's likely. But by the time they return, like I say, there are conversations ongoing as to how they will handle them because Echo was now there in the midst. Are you going to blow up in a puff of smoke something we possibly not attained for the last 15, 20 years? Just in a puff of smoke? Have you got powerful friends where you can talk to or we will come in your behalf and try for quell this thing down and drop the charges against you so that you remain a free man. Remember, if these charges are not dropped, you're really not a free man. They are hanging on you. So at some point, you need to attend court for answer to these charges. And this is why I the bet on the 25, 30% that he might return, but it will based on arrangements being made. Say, listen, I will leave to go stay out and leave you in your country for now. But I need for come back in and can clear my name. If I can clear my name, then um, I'm going to drop these charges against me. I'm fine to leave and go stay out. But he can't afford for day out within charges and day on now because now the country is split. Or you get people away they say, oh, now because it be day inside. Why you not stay, you know, here for answer the charges? Well, it makes sense. Why enough day for answer the charges? Why then can't broke a deal for go for again now? Because in a high powerful uh, value target. So you will always get powerful friends who will come to your rescue. And this be so serious that they get for pull and day. And this is what marvels me because instead of keeping a day for letting talk the talk, 
they decide for extract and come out. But because again, the ongoing chaos. So it's like pull and forth, taking the settle while they're still the top. Remember, this is ECOWAS, a body made up of, I think, 13 nations. Now then they talk, so including the most powerful of them all, Nigeria, where they spearhead, you know, this conversation with Madabio, will lack legitimacy. So there can be a compromise there. Say, you know what, team? Drop these charges against this guy. We go give you recognition or we'll do this, do that. Remember, hypocrisy, deceit, and all this gutter business is an extension of politics. It's not a clean game at all. That's my point. The final point, Fambule uh, Wawan Brink Antona, is um, we need to take note of a politician. I've always been saying this. And just before I wrap up this program, since I talk about them projects, them, and I talk something about the airport, we also get to take note of with parliament. I mean, goodness me. If Marabione they sign no contract, no agreement without the knowledge of parliament. No. So which means that despite him having a majority inside the house, there are people in there from the other side of the aisle where they participate by them, procedure there, where they agree for letting go ahead with projects. So if the project is bad, parliament is complicit in that. That's the point that I'm trying to make. So we get a hold with parliamentarians then to then the, the foot or put them foot to the fire, close to the fire, so they feel the heat. We have to do that. We have to start calling them out. Anyway, I mean they say we need to keep an eye on we politician them. Like I say, deceit, hypocrisy are all an extension of politics by different means. The most of them 99.999% of them. They are unclean. It's all about themselves. And this year, we go dedicate with strength towards out in them. We not go aspire for the core people and I are, for the big politician. Instead, we'll focus on the masses. Yeah. Let people come can, can blow mind. Let them can explain themselves within a peel. And I mean, we'll put their foot near to the fire. Instead of calling the big politician them, because you want to let them appear on a platform. No. These are selfish people. Very deceitful. Anything where something supposed to happen, some of them we politically eat there. Then they run away, come on the country. Run away, come on the country. And then they go there outside the right. Then go there outside, you know, yeah, they make commentary. But then they outside. And because then they suspect trouble yes if you suspect trouble i mean you will always want to take precaution but you are part of the problem and you're a politician if you're part of the problem you have to be a part of the solution but as soon as you smell the heat you are out which means that you're not committed and dedicated to the services of the sigalonian people because you're quick for ascond you quick for leave you quick for eject come up from the problem and let the people and for go through the problem themselves and um, um, why should they out? And at the same time, you they referee or you they you they run commentary. Probably one of these days we'll call some of them the names because we need for begin for shame them and let we begin for have these challenges because when we hit them, we know that they will respond. We won't go for that tick for tack, you know. Yeah, we will just expose them because what you say are uh, uh, just facts, and what they say so are just facts. Then they come out of the country, run come out. Anytime they expect trouble, some of them are working with the government. The government they hit them. Some of them are opposition. Government they hit them and then they come out. Some of them are working with the government actively against their own party. They are. And then as they hint them, so they come out, out then still they continue for wrong commentary. Some of them they pretend. I mean, they take people for be for be like a like a joke. And Sierra Leoneans then need for begin for see through these things. We really need for begin for see through these things or begin for see through these politicians. Where you they pretend, you know, or you they act under the guise of something else, where you they do something else. And this kind of wolf in sheep clothing act is not acceptable. With some of the things that now where they're ongoing again, some of the politicians have gone dead quiet, dead quiet. 
conspicuous. But then when things die down, you go be here every day just now. We cannot continue to be fools for these people forever. Because you know we're better country. We need for all these politicians to account. And this platform will dedicate itself to that this particular 2024. We're not going to shy away from the big issues. We will call out names. We will call out the issues. We will make the argument this 2024. And in fact, we're not beholden to anybody. This platform, as soon as I can see the colors, green, white, and blue, is what we really stand for. It's country first. Yes, we do have biases, inherent biases. Yes, you can feel sympathy, empathy for some size, some people, some things, some entity, you, you know. <laughs> but I'm telling you, Sierra Leoneans, then, it's about country first. So today I'm critical of the Marabio government because it's a duty bound thing. It's not out of malice, not out of hate. Everything that I've said here, I'm sure, on, if you want to get second thought about them, you will find out say, it's all correct. The economy is bad. The concept of um, um, free, free school education is a very good one, a very noble mode. But these things are only used to soften people, to win votes and etc. Is it working? No, it's not. After all, we had a school system. We had a school system. So it's not like we never had a school system. And that school system is still out there playing. Thanks for the free food, thanks for the free education. It's not 100%, we don't expect it to be 100%. But to work on this human development index, you have to work on the economy. It has to grow. There has to be opportunities. Because they are not, even the people that we go to school, whether they don't come out of school, whether they don't graduate, whether they're in high school or secondary school, college, vocational schools, where's the job? Where is the job? They become a liability to the state. And the state is not a welfare state to help these people. So you will find unrest. You will find poverty. And where you find poverty, you will find crime. You will find prostitution. This is what is happening with government. This is what we are calling out. Now my final word. My final word. Okay, Sarah, many thanks for clarifying that. Um... I understand who said you come up from, sister, but you see, the charges are official. You see, this is the point. And that don't left with divided. You see, this is exactly what's happening here. There might be people who will not comment at all, but they do believe, say, what you they say is true, and you get others who believe, say, no, 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 the man is guilty. But many thanks for clarifying. Coconut, coconut. His character is not tarnished. The people in the West African region knows him. See how he was welcomed. It is all based on jealousy because if he is extremely popular. All right, many thanks for that. Open up, open up. <laughs> Very interesting name. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd say we need for who we serve. We self in the first place accountable. From last year, the year before last, I don't understand we need for range we get. One thing where we will do again, where we need for deceased crops. On in fact, all of this factor under country first, think country first, and just see the difference. Um, a little over six years ago, I believe, or six years ago, to be exact, Marabio became the head of state of the country. Yes, he inherited an economy which was in very bad shape, but there was an economy and a functioning economy. But you have to admit, like I'm admitting, that it was in bad shape. But you inherited the economy anyway, and you did make promises. Yes, the date that you gave, you fell short of it. But for goodness sake, now five years, I know past one time. You did on your second term, and you become a finance minister, where in your first term, we tell people and say, Give me six months we fix this uh, uh, economy and bread and butter. Of course, that is far gone. Now it's completely different talk because the situation is so fluid. Every day, different things they happen. Every day, different things they happen. That we cannot even catch up. Even those of us that are blogging or blogging, we can't even catch up. Much more to the people in self self with the nadi gone. But 
The second term, the same man will not fix the economy in six months. Come back again, tell salon people, let's say, when I give it three months, this is not after the economy don't really move down. It don't collapse, it day on life support, it don't come at all. Far better with the economy be there for us, with the inheritor on the bad shape. More worse, they say, when I give me uh, 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 three months or three days. Then you know that these people are not serious. That's all a joke. One of the same man with the count money and they give support and one of you, while the rest of the people are going hungry. Listen to the supporters of the SLPP led government. Not the government, the led government, the party. But this is different. To solve a problem, we first of all have to admit that that problem they exist. In government, you cannot continue for share the blame with your predecessor. We don't go over six years ago. We're not responsible for policy. Nothing of the kind. We think they shape the lives of the Sigalonian people. But this is exactly the case six years on. And those that continue for doing to this day, you should be ashamed of yourself. If you really love your country, you will not be doing this at all. Under no condition will you be doing this because this is shameful. This is unconscionable. Just for fair and excuse, six years on, and despite the fact we did before you, um, an audit report which was dismissed because in name and shape people and we thief part out the last government thief. But then supporters of this government, because now we own thief man, so it's not a problem. So you see, it's not about country, it's about individual, it's about parties, it's about region, it's about tribe. Because if you've been make up a country, you've been point finger at that thief man, despite the thief man being your thief man. Because whatever they steal is affecting the general base of the country. So the country you not know, go before because they will continue for divide me along the line then they. When the red come, the red people and support or the people and from the north. When the green come, the green people and support or the people from the south. In the meantime, Mama Salud is bleeding and crying. But we, the population, we get the responsibility for till we politician them for act so that the country will rise up. We are not. We're comfortable, and especially those who are close to power, where they enjoy the crumbs where they for them. We need for change their attitude there. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we are back. Um, I want to end on this, on this uh, coconut, coconut in peace. God don't send manna from heaven anymore. So Sierra Leone economy to change to where bio takes over is impossible. Yeah, but it is their responsibility. And so then therefore need for stop for continuing for play this blame game on a government remaining in a power six years ago. We get nothing for do with government now or waiting to happen economically, financially, monetarily, fiscally, nothing at all. You just need for stop. I want to say thank you to everyone of whom I will watch the program tonight. I want to say the um, TNN podcast is back. We've made a few changes. So I can see it's more about podcasting now than um, um, the media empire. The media empire is still there. The media empire is the mothership, not the wholesome company. We get all the things that we attach to around. But what you will do so is blogging. So this one is known as the TNN um, um, podcast. Yeah. So I thank Una once more, you know, for watching. I'm really, really thankful um, for all the ones that we send comments of different kinds during the long absence from the media, expressing concerns or otherwise. I want to say thank you to you all. Um, this year, together, we will try to make the difference. It has to be together. It has to be collective. And I really appreciate Una all. Okay. <clears throat> I really do appreciate it now all that we keep the fire burning. We cannot give up. We've only got one Sierra Leone. And this one Salono we get, if we not continue for fed for reshaper in we own mold the way we want them. The few people and political elites then will continue for take we for a ride. Join me in critiquing them. Join me in calling them out. Join me in criticizing them. Join me in lifting Mama Salon up. This is beyond TNN podcast and Prince and Nukrumah. Today the 22nd day of um, January.
2024. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all a happy and prosperous new year. We will catch up again. Take care.